We're at the MSI booth at CES 2020, and the first question that I had is, where's B550? And we'll talk about that later today. But also, there's an X570 board we'll be covering. They've got two updates on cases that we saw around Computex of last year uh, when they were pre-production. They're starting to come out now. There have been actually some improvements to this one, but it's motherboard GP manufacturers making cases always kind of difficult territory to tread. So we'll be talking about that as well. There's a liquid cooler. That's It's a liquid cooler. Not super exciting, but the uh, IGIS TI5 looks really interesting. The pricing, though, is another point of pain to talk about. So anyway, we've got a lot to discuss with the MSI booth for CES 2020. Before that, this video is brought to you by Linode Cloud Computing. We've trusted Linode as our web host since 2012 and recommend it for excellent technical and customer support, reliable uptime, and a clean interface. Aside from cloud hosting, Linode.com recently added GPU hosting plans for machine learning and neural net use, built with RTX 6000 GPUs and 10 gigabit per second network speeds. They're also starting to deploy Epic CPUs in their servers. Sign up for Linode.com cloud computing with code GNEXUS20 for a $20 credit or click the link in the description below to visit Linode.com slash GamersNexus. Let's just get the motherboard stuff out of the way first. There's a, a new Tomahawk Wi-Fi. It's X570. The Tomahawk series has actually made a pretty good name for itself. So B450, for example, Tomahawk is one of the most popular boards on the market, period, for AMD Ryzen right now. And it's a good board, so it's earned it. So there's an X570 variant coming out. It is going to use 60 amp power stages. I don't have exact specs on every VRM component. I did try to get them, but uh, we know that the, the, there's an inner cell 69247 in there, and otherwise there's 60 amp power stages. And it's supposed to release in May, uh, 200 bucks. It is a, a Wi-Fi Tomahawk variant of X570, so it's a bit in the, the kind of mid-tier, mid-range tier pricing these days, based on modern pricing anyway. So board looks interesting. We haven't tested it, obviously. But uh, the next question I had, though, was, OK, well, but the B450 Tomahawk's so popular. When am I going to get a B550? And the answer is not yet. Uh, I've asked a couple of different motherboard partners at the show here the same question about B550. We've been asking about it for probably about a year now. Give you the, the timeline. The original answer to B550 when was quarter three or four of 2019. And that turned it, that was about a year ago from now. That turned into quarter one of 2020. And now, speaking with uh, multiple unnamed motherboard manufacturers, that has turned into quarter three of 2020. So I don't know exactly when it's going to arrive. It keeps moving. I can't really commit to anything. But quarter three is what I've been told most recently. Uh, it's supposed to be a response to Intel's upcoming stuff for the, um, well, for the, the 10 series desktop parts, the non-HEDT parts. So I, I think if you think of it strategically, AMD's probably, they're in a position now where, much like NVIDIA is, where they're, they're holding their own without needing to constantly release stuff. So I almost wonder if AMD is playing the game of, you know, we've, we've released pretty well. We're doing fine with B450 and X570. We're moving a hell of a lot more than Intel. So let's just hold back B550 until Intel has something to counter. So that's, I think that's the game AMD is playing right now. Uh, or to get getting into some of the mind games with their products now that they're in a, a more privileged position than they were previously. So that's the news from B550 and X570 uh, for MSI, at least for the, the Tomahawk. For other products here, so I guess we could do the cases. This stuff's fairly straightforward. Uh, this is the the better of the two. The, the other one, I can't really say that. I, I couldn't use that word to describe it. But this one is a Sakura 500P. There's a 500X as well. They're pretty similar from what I understand other than RGB differences for the fans. Uh, it does have a large, I don't know, maybe inch and a half, almost two inch mesh panel on the, or side panel, side skirt basically on the top and the front. There's no front ventilation clearly, but there's, enough space here where it could be made to work. The criticism I had, and MSI has, has taken note of this and passed it along to the PM, so I, I hope maybe there's improvement. But the criticism I had was that the fans are outside of the chassis rather than recessed inside of the chassis. So when you do that, it's just like the H500P original. You're pushing the fans past the chassis wall, and that reduces the amount of effective the mesh spacing you have on the side. So now instead of having this full almost whatever two inches of spacing of uh, intake, it gets cut down because the fan's sticking out, protruding through it. So you go down to maybe 30% instead of 100%. And there's fixes for that. Uh, it's a question of whether they do them. I will say that since I saw this, originally, originally saw this 
I don't know if it was a year, a year and a half ago, when it was super prototype, there have been improvements from that one. So I, it sounds like MSI is being receptive more so than ASUS was with their cases, uh, where ASUS just locked down originally and they were like, well, we're, we're ASUS, we're the best, we know what we're doing, which wasn't actually true there. So it sounds like they're listening. Um, but yeah, Sakura 500P, the existing one, uh, the 500X is 250 bucks. They don't have a firm price on this specific model yet. Comes with four 120 fans, vertical GPU mount that you shouldn't use, and I think that covers that one. The next one, there's a Creator 400M over here, and this one's pretty quick to discuss. So it follows the Creator series naming, but in terms of case paneling, uh, I mean, I, I would rather just have this without the door, I think, honestly. Get rid of the door MSI. It doesn't do anything. So the, the canvas here is not a sufficient noise block. You'll get more noise reduction by leaving that open and lowering the fan RPM. Anyway, uh, so plastic cover for what's supposed to be a dust filter. There's way too much plastic on this. It, it really needs to be cut down a lot so that there's more air for it to breathe. Uh, then there's space for fans here. I think it comes with, I want to say it's two 140s front. They weren't 100% clear on this, but it sounds like two 140s front, one 140 rear is most likely the configuration. And there's some side venting here, which actually would come in, so it would get used. But again, you're probably 70%, I bet if we calculated the surface area and subtracted the holes, it's probably 70% plastic. Needs a lot of improvement. Uh, open this up and then you get some more weird stuff. So the, I keep getting shocked everywhere because there's carpet in this room. The fan mounts on the top of the power supply shroud, there's holes drilled for screws obviously go through for the fans. And they've got holes punched for ventilation, but the ventilation doesn't proceed all the way to where the screw hole is. So it's gonna end up cutting off like between that side and the other side, uh, 10, 15% of the service area where the fan can pull air in. And also that's okay because there's nowhere for the air to come in to begin with. It's, I mean, there's a hole in the bottom, yes, but the distance from here to here, you're gonna need like a Delta fan to get past that spacing. And then you're also going through cables maybe part of a power supply and hard drive cages with potentially hard drives in them. So this stuff actually is going to do almost literally nothing just by looking at it. So that needs improvement too. Um, but uh, this is definitely the cheaper of the cases. There's no price yet on it. It's mostly plastic. Um, I, I think the good news is that with the, this also doesn't close properly, but it's a prototype. The good news is that with the Secura, I saw improvement from when we first saw it. So I hope we're gonna see improvement with this because somebody, one of these motherboard makers is going to make a properly good case at some point eventually. ASUS can't seem to figure it out. Maybe MSI can do it. Gigabyte sure as hell doesn't know what they're doing when they're making cases. So MSI, I think, has been listening enough to maybe get something done with cases. The Sakura is looking the most promising for sure. It's kind of got that Lian Lee like high end look to it. So we'll see where it goes. But that covers the cases for for MSI. Uh, Tomahawk again looks good. I guess we could talk laptops briefly. Those are interesting right now with the 4000 series of Ryzen CPUs on mobile. So for laptops, they've got an Alpha 15, Bravo 15. They're both 15 inch models. The Bravo 15 is supposed to be about a thousand dollar model from the one we saw at the show floor. It is a 4800H in there, 16 gigabytes of memory, 5500M mobile Radeon GPU. It's pretty interesting. We haven't seen the mobile GPUs yet at the show. Other than that, the price almost sounds maybe too good. So I'm not sure on that, but that is what I was told. Uh, 1080p, 144 Hertz IPS FreeSync for the display. And I don't have a firm TBD or, or arrival date on that. Uh, I guess I, the, the arrival date is TBD. Um, for the liquid cooling stuff, we've got footage of that too. So MagCore Liquid 360R, it's MSI doing what everyone else is doing and making a liquid cooler. It looks like a deep cool pump in there where the pump is in the rad. So it's sort of where the, it's where the fin block is in the radiator rather than in the uh, CPU block because then you have patent issues with Asetech and I, there's nothing they can really do about that. So MSI is too big of a target, Asetech would come after them. So the, the pump is instead in the radiator. And then for the, um, I, I think I might have a firm supplier on that, but I'm gonna wait till I can confirm with Deepcool if it's, if it's the company I think they're, the, the sources, I think it's maybe, mm, it might be Boobalist, but I'm not sure. So uh, $150 for the 360R, supposed to be 4,000 RPM for the pump speed. Uh, I'm sure it's variable. And then fans are 500, 2000 RPM. It's looking like a quarter two launch. It's a liquid cooler. 
MSI didn't seem super excited about it, so I guess I don't need to be either. The iGIS, though, is really interesting. So the TI-5, we've got a good amount of footage of as well we can drop in here, but it is meant to be a looker. It's got kind of that Cylon look to it or something. Uh, not really quite sure. It's definitely, definitely going to go with Cylon on that, but very limited ventilation, really interesting exterior design. There's a knob on the front that's got a, uh, a screen in it, and it can feed back your CPU temperature, frequency, GPU frequency, GPU temperature are the options for the, the display on the front center right now. They're looking at adding a custom option later, kind of like the motherboards, and then the dial itself, if you turn it, will adjust the LED mood. And you change the LED color and software. I guess other features that are interesting, there's a 5G Wi-Fi card where you can insert a SIM card. So I did kind of like that. You could buy one of those separately anyway, but you get a you throw a SIM card in there and get obviously pay for a plan and then you get internet. I makes more sense for something like a laptop. So I'm not really sure what the exact use. I mean, I'm kind of looking at it off camera and I don't know. I don't really see myself dragging that around where I need a SIM card. But it's an interesting feature. Pricing is kind of rough and completely TBD. So I think based on the reaction for the pricing numbers, it sounds like that might still change because the range I was given was four to five thousand dollars starting four grand for the uh, TI-5, and that model, 9,900K. Yikes. So that was the pricing on it. 2080 Ti for the GPU, which still doesn't justify that. And then 64 gigabytes on memory, 2933, but the TBD on if they end up doing an XMP option or something instead. Quarter three, Intel only at the moment. I'd love to see AMD in it because uh, they're super relevant right now, but it's Intel only presently. And otherwise, it's it's an enclosure that genuinely looks really cool, and I hope I uh, hope MSI can figure out how to pull off the pricing. It matters more than the ventilation at this point because if no one's going to buy it, the ventilation doesn't matter. So ventilation looks like it might be workable. Uh, GPU is a bit suffocated. The rest is fine. Um, pricing though, that case is not worth two grand, and uh, it looks cool. Not that cool. Anyway, that's the MSI suite for CES 2020. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more. Go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus or store.gamersnexus.net to help us out directly. And I'll see you all next time.